Hello, this video is on API POST requests. It will go over how to set up the API connector, how to use Sheety on Google Sheets, and which API call parameters to use. First of all, we start off with what is a POST request. It just means that two apps are communicating with another, and that when we enter a button in Bubble, like for example, we enter these inputs and click on Add, then this information is also posted to another app so the other app can use it. Now, a good example was given in this uh, great YouTube uh, video by James No Code. I can link it below, showing how to connect your Bubble app to Google Sheets, which is definitely something uh, which might be of interest to you. And what this, however, so did not show is how can you actually immediately kind of duplicate any rows you're adding to your bubble backend to a Google Sheet backend. Because in this video, it's more about how to display what you've got in a Google Sheet over on a bubble repeating group table. So how do we go about doing this? First of all, the service he recommended was called Sheety. <laughs> Great name, especially the high-priced version, Extremely Sheety XL. And what it does, it basically allows you to easily connect Google Sheets with an API. So all you have to do with uh, Google is open a Google Sheets, such as this one, and then you can have one subsheet. In my case, I called it emails. And then I have columns, such as the name, the email, and the ID. And what I want to do now is that whenever I add text over here, so I enter a number, I enter a text like a task and an email like task test. Whenever I add something, it's not only added to the bubble backend, but also like here to this Google Sheet, which is just very useful as it's a kind of automatic way to back up my data. So to do this, first step was to go over to plugins and then go over to add plugins and search for the API connector in this beautifully fast search and then clicking on install it's by bubble itself and then i have it over here and then i added an api you can call it what you like it's called sheety in this case there's no authentication required so just anyone can use it. Of course, you may want to change this. And then I've created a post request. We'll go through it in more detail. I've told it to use it as an action. I've got a URL. And then I tell it the header. And I tell it also the body of the request so that when I click something here in Bubble, I want the name, email, and ID to be used over on GT. Okay, and so how did I know all this, you might be asking. So all I did here on uh, Sheety was, first of all, I just had to create a new um, project, and then I had to, here I have the project, and here it tells me the API, and here I had to enable the post request and immediately I get a URL, which I copied over into here on post. Here, notice this is all JSON because this is what Bubble also uses. And now, first of all, I had to prepare my spreadsheet. So as you saw, I had the column headers at the top. And then I clicked on making requests and I wanted to add a row and it tells me to use the post request. And then I just took this text here and copied it over bubble. And of course I made some amendments depending on what's in my sheet, but basically email is the sheet name. So if you go to my Google sheet, here it's called emails. So actually if you go to Sheety's documentation, it says that will always make it um, from
from plural to singular itself. So that's why it's just email singular over here and emails is the name of the sheet here in the URL. And then I told it name. And now what I want is that I can kind of type in whatever I want into here. And therefore I have added these two arrows to the side. So this allows me to add whatever I want. So I've got name, email ID, and then at the start, I have to initialize the call. So as the name, I can input something like, for example, John and John and Do.com and value four. I can input anything here, make sure they're not private. Also content type set value to application slash JSON. How do I know this? If I go over here, it tells me sheety tip. Don't forget to set the content type header to application JSON. Okay, and then I have to click on initialize call or reinitialize. And immediately Bubble kind of will recognize the, or try to recognize the data types. So indeed name is what I type text. Email is type text and ID is type number. As uh, we can see here, text, text, number. And then I can go over here to save, or I can first click on show raw data because this shows that you may remember I put in the values john, john and do.com and five. So this shows me how the request actually looks for this example. And so now I can use it in a workflow. And so here I had set up three inputs. I'd made sure that the first input is type integer and the other ones are type text. And so when I click add, the first thing I can do is I can just add the row over in bubble. So for example, I create a new post test with the order number. So this is type number, the input, the title of the input and description. But now in the second step, or may, like if I want, I can also omit this, of course. I can uh, only do this. So how do I even get this workflow? I just have to go underneath plugins. And now as I've initialized the BI call, I can select um, sheet post request. And then I can just tell it as the body to take something dynamic. So I can either do input enter numbers value or alternatively, I can also do result of step one order number and then result of steps one's title and result of steps one's description. So that way it will always duplicate exactly what happened in step one. And yeah, that's, uh, I just have to refresh here because of course I did slightly change this workflow. Just put in a number nine and nine. Envy and envy add. Now I can click on step by step just to see what's happening. So I can first create the post, and then I can see that I'm doing the sheety post request and back over on GT, we now have this row in here. So this is a great way of kind of creating a second version automatically of all my data. So just quickly to show you the end screen again, as this might be the toughest, just make sure to have all the capitalization uh, exactly like in your Google Sheet. And yeah, that's already it. Hope this video helped you. Cheers.